Hello and welcome to Photography with Emery, and if I had a twin brother, you wouldn't really know who was doing the show. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about Phil Flash. This sort of ends our Flash mini-series, for now that is, because in the future I'll still have some topics about Flash, as well as lighting techniques. So stay tuned for that. And, as well, at the end of the show, I'll tell you what the next episode is about. It's a really cool one, so stay tuned. Enjoy. Alright, let's start with the basics. In regard to the fill flash mode itself, the idea is very simple, and there's not much to it. Indeed, more or less all you need to do is force the flash to fire when you take a picture. See that lightning bolt icon? Well that's basically the fill flash mode. Now depending on the make and model of your camera, the menu options may change a little if you do or do not have an external flash attached, like a hot shoe mounted one. For example, if I do not attach a hot shoe flash on my digital SLR, then the menu has options to set the power output of the built-in flash. As you can see, I can set it to always fire at full power, or at various fractions of it. But if I attach my external hot shoe mounted flash, then my only option is to force it to fire every time I take a picture. In this case, the mode you have your flash unit set to matters. If it's set to auto, then most cameras will do a pre-flash to determine the correct power output of a flash in order to get a proper exposure. If you set the flash to manual mode, then all the camera does is trigger the flash to fire, but the power output must be adjusted by you. Now if your flash and camera are compatible with each other and your flash has a display, then you'll be able to see the effective range of your flash, generally given as a guide number or distance, which will update as you vary exposure settings on your camera, like aperture for example. If you use a small aperture, in other words big F numbers, then your flash's range will be less than if you were to use larger aperture or smaller F numbers. Now just to clarify, there is a difference between setting your camera to auto flash or fill flash mode. When using auto flash, the camera will decide for which shots to trigger the flash. In other words, if the metering system determines that there is enough light for a good exposure, then it will not fire the flash. But in fill flash mode, you're forcing the camera to fire the flash every time you take a photo, whether there's a lot of light or hardly any. Now let's take a look at what fill flash looks like, and I'll start discussing some points to watch out for. To demonstrate this, I went outside, set my camera on a tripod, and I stood with my back to the sun, which of course puts me in a dark shadow. Then I took a series of pictures starting with a shot where I did not use the flash. As you can see, not very impressive. For the next shot, I slipped on my hot shoe flash and set it to low power, then a setting roughly in the middle. As you can see, we're now getting a little definition, better exposure. Lastly, I ramped up the power output to full, which in this case gave the best result. And this is one of the primary uses of fill flash. It can help lighten up harsh shadows caused by uneven lighting, especially by the sun, and therefore provides more aesthetically pleasing exposure. On my blog I've explained in detail why cameras expose so poorly in such lighting conditions, and of course I also have a couple of links to websites on the topic. Do check it out. But fill flash can also be used to create some interesting effects. Before I show you the next photo, I do want to warn you about pointing your camera lens directly into the sun. For the shot you're about to see, I kept the lens cap on until I blocked the sun with my head and body. If the sun shines directly into your lens, you could cause serious and even permanent damage to your equipment, so do be very careful. So here's the shot. Now unlike the other series of photos you saw where I had a wide open aperture and fairly fast shutter speed, I decided to use a tiny aperture of f16 to get a large depth of field, but doing so forced me to use a slower shutter speed of 1 250th of a second and the flash set to full power in order to get a good exposure on my face. But the result is really neat, as the bright sky and yours truly are both quite well exposed. And for the record, the image has not been altered to change the exposure balance or combined with another image, this is a single photo. Lastly, I just wanted to point out that fail flash can be used improperly, so to speak. Usually the problem stems from too much flash power, which causes a subject to be blown out or gives that ugly, harsh flash feel instead of that hint of extra light. Luckily though, digital cameras make our lives easier, as you can almost always see the photo right after you've taken it. 
All right, so I hope you enjoyed that episode and you'll have a lot of fun with Fill Flash. It's kind of a cool feature, sometimes underlooked, so definitely do experiment with it and uh, do your best. And of course, please do subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the goodies that I'm up to. And uh, as well, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. And in addition to all those websites that I try to manage somehow, I also have a blog and I always write a supplemental post. So this video will have one Check that out as well. There is the title somewhere on the screen. Check it out. And next time, yes, a cool topic indeed, RAW versus JPEG. That should be an interesting one, so stay tuned for that, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.